Hello kids, wish you all a very very lovely evening to all of you. Today is a great day. Recently, the International Astronomy Olympiad results got announced and Indians have done it again. Indians have uh, bagged a lot of gold medals and, and, and made the entire country proud. Those were few students who, who got medals for India. I've got one more gentleman with us, Mr. Madhu Kashyap, who is also an awardee from Indian National uh, Science, Indian Science Congress and from Europe. European Space, European <laughs> Space Agency. He's a, he's a scientist, he's an astrophysicist, and he's a spectacular teacher for astronomy. In fact, this gentleman has written two books, authored uh, multiple books on astronomy at beginner's level as well as at advanced level, and he has been kind enough to share his time for all of you kids to talk about what is, to, to give you an overview about astronomy and also what he plans to cover in our upcoming courses for NAC aspirants. Courses keep up kari hai, to mein aapko bata hai toh bachcho, abhi recently we launched courses for NAC aspirants, jahan pe humne do courses ki baat kari thi, one only astronomy live lectures along with content of physics, maths and astronomy and second lectures of physics, maths and astronomy with content of physics, maths and astronomy. The details of the lectures, detail of the course you can find in the description box. Remember, classes of astronomy are starting from August 23rd and classes for physics and maths will start from September 4th once you get free from IOQM batches. So folks, I will not waste a lot of time. You are our future awardees, future gold medalist for India. He is one wonderful <laughs> gentleman who has, who is, who has, who is author as well as awardee. I leave over to him to talk about astronomy and give you a brief overview of how exactly you should prepare astronomy for an NAC examination. So sir, thank you very much for taking our time. Bacho, inko really thank you karo because inno ne apna bho hamare ko time diya hai not only today but also to teach in this course. So thank you students, over to you sir. Thank you so much sir. Uh, it was a wonderful overwhelming uh, uh, introduction from Hari sir who's a very experienced person and who I have very big uh, high regards for. So, uh, NSEA, why do we need to study uh, NSEA in detail? Uh, NSEA is a very important program because many people study physics, chemistry, mathematics, uh, and uh, biology, but not many people look at astronomy as a serious program. And many people uh, look at the word astro and think it is space, but it's not space, but it is basically stars. So, we talk about stars. and. When we talk about stars, many of us think astrology. Astrology is basically Babaji science. Okay, astrology is not real science. Astrology is Babaji science. What we do is astronomy. So first, let me tell you, let me go to the next slide. Uh, and let me just tell you how the, exactly the word astronomy is so important to study. Because astronomy has parts like astrophysics, astrophysics, we have astrochemistry, astrochemistry, we also have astrobiology. So astronomy can lead science to different levels of understandings. And these are not just pure sciences, we, you know our uh, space science is not doing bad at all when it comes to applications as well. So we will be starting with the pure science and in this particular astronomy program, we are going to start by understanding the extreme, extreme environments like stars. Stars are very hot. We do experiments in, this, uh, in the present world, right? Uh, we use our nature as the world and we study physics, chemistry, biology and have fun, it, fun with it. But stars are some extreme uh, environments. You have high temperatures, high density. We talk about stars. Like, for example, I can give you something like a flavor of neutron stars. Neutron stars are so heavy, so dense. When we talk about dense, uh, if I take one tablespoon of neutron star, it is as heavy as lifting a mountain. That's how heavy we are talking about. And when we talk about these particular stars, uh, they have different evolutionary categories. So we can learn them in detail and uh, I have taught astronomy Olympiad to many students and I, many of them have cleared and I'm very happy if we can get as many gold medals. Just like in Olympics, we bring gold medal to our country. Here's a chance in astronomy for you guys to bring a gold medal to our country. 
so when we talk about stars it's not just stars in the sky we look at even planets we look at galaxies we talk about clusters we have clusters super clusters where is a group of you can have clusters in different formats when we talk about star clusters we talk we are talking about open clusters and globular clusters open clusters are this group of stars which are gravitationally bound and it looks like a open face and when we talk about globular it looks like a globe and it is combined pulled by a gravitational field and when we talk about super clusters we are talking about galaxies you know when we look at the sky there are not one star two stars billions of stars and these billions of stars do you think we are the only life that's available on this particular uh, universe when we talk about the entire universe we are not just the uh, it is very you know very very arrogant of us to think that we are the only type of intelligence life out, outside our planet earth uh, uh, sorry on planet earth when we look at outside the earth we are looking at many many stars and this starlight is taking billions of years to reach us we are going to do those measurements with light years parsecs and when we talk about uh, nearby things how astronomical unit comes into play so if somebody asks me an address as an astro number if they ask me an address what is my home address uh, i say i belong to a place of place in the multiverse so when we talk about multiverse we live in a, a specific universe when we talk about universe i stay in a specific galaxy called as milky way galaxy this is our galaxy and when we talk about milky way galaxy we talk about our solar system so this is our solar system and when we talk about solar system we are talking about our planet earth and when i talk about planet earth i go further and say i belong to a continent called as asia i live in a country called india live in a state called karnataka live in a city called bengaluru further i would like to i would like to keep it till bengaluru so you can see or if you just look at your own address if you look at your own address book just look at your own address book the universe is huge and when we look at this beautiful universe uh carl sagan uh, uh one of the greatest astrophysicist of our time what he did uh, there is a spacecraft called voyager okay so there is a spacecraft called as voyager and it went beyond its space mission to the edge of the universe and took a selfie of earth and that selfie just looked like a pale dot blue let me change the color and give you the feel of blue so it was just a speck of dot in the big vast universe in this particular dot you know you live i live all the people who we love we hate hitler lived gandhi lived all the people from the history are in this particular world everybody lived in that particular pale of dot so when we talk it makes us humble how small we are in this vast universe okay let us look at the this was just to give you an uh, inspiring introduction of what exactly is uh, happening in this particular uh, uh, astronomy why do we need to study there is a vastness and we need to find is there any are we alone in the universe those are big questions that we are not able to answer right now so astronomy helps us to understand what's going on in that particular area so as i told you you have to be very familiar with the terminologies like stars you know stars are not like this okay let me use a different color so stars does not look like this many people think star means this this is not the star the shape of the star is actually uh, it's a basically a big gas of ball it's a big gas of ball and what is happening inside our sun is gravity is pulling everything inward gravity is pulling everything inward to the center core and there are thermonuclear fusion bombs exploding every second and pushing it in the form of radiation outside radiation is being pushed out outside and this balance of tug of war between the radiational pressure and gravity so we can call the force of gravity as fg and the radiational pressure as fp so this particular condition we call it as 
hydrostatic equilibrium we call it as hydrostatic equilibrium of the star so once this hydrostatic equilibrium is breached out the star starts evolving into a different phase or we call it as the death of the star being started so our sun will become big and it's going to become as a red giant it's going to eat away mercury venus earth but one happy thing is me and you won't be alive to see that uh, and uh, when we talk about this particular uh, concept uh, it is very intriguing we talk about solar systems in solar system what all we have in solar system we have our star sun we have our planets mercury venus earth mars jupiter saturn neptune uranus and we don't talk about pluto why <laughs> there is an in international astronomical union iau international astronomical union called as iau so they defined they defined uh, for a planet it should have three categories i think this question was on on this one of this question was asked why pluto is no longer called as a planet in 20 Uh, in the previous year's question paper, why Pluto is no longer considered as a planet? It has to, it has to follow three important rules. One, it has to be of course round, okay, and it should be uh, orbiting our sun, Earth, and the third point is, it should have cleared all the debris around it for it to be called as a planet. Even though Pluto qualifies in the first two categories, it fails with the third one. so the international astronomical union making these rules ruled out pluto to be a planet and a big sea of debate started there and when we talk about uh, once we uh, once we understand this our solar system planets what else we have we have asteroid belt uh we have asteroids we have meteoroids uh we have comets uh we have uh, uh, uh tidal waves which is coming because of the tides that is being formed and you know we know water flows and we can actually see on certain moons there is a flow of rock <laughs> we can talk about comparative planetology uh, in the upcoming classes and you would have heard the word exoplanet in the previous year question paper they would have asked you to find the something with respect to the atmospheric mass composition uh, in uh, exoplanet uh, let me use this eraser so we talk about exoplanets So when I talk about exoplanets, I get very excited. The reason is, exoplanets are planets outside the solar system, and when we talk about these planets, uh, the one thing I did was uh, when I started my journey in research uh, in exoplanets. Uh, so, and uh, you know the surface temperature. You can't go to a planet and check whether the planet is hot or cold, or a star is hot or cold. You have to figure out a uh, unique technique to find it, or indirect method to find it. so i'm happy to uh, share me and my team uh, we found a formula for finding the surface temperature of the exoplanet and uh, so i think harry sir said i received the ing research award from european space agency in netherlands uh, the reason why i got that is we found this formula and we also found some earth like and mars like planets which became the cover page of astrophysics and space science journal and uh, for that i received the ing research award from european space agency in netherlands and uh, these are planets outside the solar system how do we detect them detecting them is a very challenging task there are different techniques like doppler shift techniques there are questions based on doppler effect in uh, you know uh, astronomy and uh, olympiad questions basically and i have written in detail about these things uh, you, <laughs> you know whenever many people wanted to say sir why don't you talk about usf more i just say just use uh, use google or amazon uh, to read more about me yeah that's the fun part uh, Uh, so when we talk about exoplanets pl- these are the there are something called as exo moons exo comets exo basically means outside our solar system whatever we find and we have around 5000 uh, exoplanets right now uh, this number keep varying uh, with every day uh, being rolled on and rolled out since being this is be- this being a recorded session uh, i would say approximately in the timeline we have we are around 4 to 5k of uh, exoplanets and um, there are many uh, missions there are if you look at the astronomy of Olymp- olympiad syllabus it's quite 
wide and it sounds like you need to know the you have to hear the popular lectures what is going on in the current trends all these things are there right uh, in the particular astronomy and there are words like galaxies and clusters so when we talk about galaxies and clusters we talk about agns active galactic nuclei and uh, we also th these active galactic nuclei are basically uh, in like radio galaxies which are uh, as big as a black hole but have jets coming out and uh, we use the word blazars quasars coming out of them so all these things are fun to study right so when we want to know these things these are very like these are not just made up stories right we study uh, using our telescopes and we have wonderful telescopes we uh, i have used i have personally used the venu bapu telescope in kavlur for my research i have used the uh, himalayan chandra telescope located in mount saraswat in handle in himalayas and the uh, uh, center uh, controlling station is in crest observatory in hoskote in bengaluru uh, so these are fun things that, that's a robotic telescope you can actually use that and we can learn all these things in detail in about indian telescopes of ground based and also we have uh, beautiful telescopes in space you know jwst james webber space telescope uh, is giving outstanding information and research of what is going on right now so in that context we are blessed to be in a period where we are learning so many things in detail and we are gonna know more about these things um, so when we when we talk about this particular things uh, we are talking about galaxies we are talking about clusters we are talking about exoplanets uh, we can also talk about very basic cosmology as well so how everything started with a big bang kind of a thing and how everything is going to end and how the universe being like a soap bubble ideology come into play uh, starting from hubble's law till the soap bubble uh, ideology so we can see the journey very beautifully there i'm going to tease them in detail um, and also we talk about life outside our own planet earth we know earth is the only planet uh, where we have found li life and there are twin earth uh and uh, recently jwst found kepler 22b uh as one of the exoplanets uh, uh in the kepler 22 system i think yeah it was kepler 22 system if i'm not if i'm wrong you may correct me in the comments uh, uh because these are numbers so <laughs> i'm talking with respect to uh the memory right now uh, so when we talk about these things kepler has done great job Kepler is the uh, uh, telescope which was sent by NASA in 2009 for the study of exoplanets. And we have also, we can also study about magnitudes of the star and the constellations, okay? And the constellation does not have any effect on us like astrologers say, so. <laughs> and when we talk about constellations, uh, we have Orion constellations, the beautiful constellations, and uh, we are gonna learn and have fun with them, okay? It's gonna be storytelling, and there is a star called as Betelgeuse uh, in the constellation of Orion, and that's gonna go supernova in our own lifetime. So we'll, there will be a two bright objects, like one is moon, another one an exploded supernova remnant, where we can watch both of them, and uh, uh, we can feel like there are two sources of light coming at us. So these are the fun things uh, that uh, you will be experiencing in your own lifetime. Actually, many people thought this may happen tomorrow or, or many thousands of years. But now the current status of the Betelgeuse and some papers have come out saying that this may happen in our own lifetime. Uh, so very soon, it's going to go kaboom. <laughs> so let us go in detail to about all these things. And, uh, you know, these are the things where you won't have proper information uh, or in, uh, like uh, where to start and where to and I know if you get a bachelor's degree or a master's degree or a PhD, then you will feel comfortable un in understanding these things. But at plus two level or class 11 level. So once you finish your school or uh, you, are, you are curious about what is going on in the universe, I think this will be a right course for you. So please do join me on the day of the course, which is 23rd of August. Please look at the description below. I'll be really, really, really happy and we will have fun interactions in the class and we are go I'm gonna clear all your doubts and we are gonna look at this beautiful universe and we know, I always keep saying Earth is a time machine. Every day we are, f are traveling into the future. And uh, we also look at the past. 
in a way. So if you look at our star, Sun, you know, uh, it takes only people, whenever I say the photons which are touching your skin, how long, how old are they? If I ask the student, the student always says around eight minutes, around approximately around eight minutes. You can go with the decimals if you are interested. But when the photon is born in the core, it's going to do a drunken master walk. You know, when a drunken person, he falls down, he bombards with another person, all these things happen. So that particular dance, zigzag dance, Brownian motion or drunken master motion is going to take for millions of years before the photon reaches us. So whatever photons that is touching your skin, it's much older than your grandparents, great grandparents. So you have to imagine we are looking at the past. When we look at the sky, we are actually looking at the past. And Earth is a time machine which is taking us forward. With that note, I would like to uh, leave you in peace and would love to, really love to teach you astronomy in the upcoming course. Thank you and have a nice day.